Confetti falls, fireworks erupt. A brand new Disney attraction is announced at the park you love. But hold on a minute. Wasn't there another announcement ceremony just like this a few years ago that never came to be? Disney's been on a roller coaster of its own lately, announcing grand theme park projects only to quietly cancel them months or even years later. In the dynamic world of theme parks, you'd expect this to happen from time to time, but this isn't an isolated incident, and we've counted over a dozen instances of projects suffering from this fate over the last 10 years. So, what's going on behind the scenes? Why the cancelled plans? Let's dive into the case of Disney's broken promises. In less than a month, Epcot will officially be finished with its huge seven-year-long revitalization, which surprisingly saw more projects announced and cancelled than ones that actually opened. Whilst guests did eventually get a revised version of Ratatouille from Paris and the brand new Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, there were a ton more plans that were officially announced that never came to be. Starting at World Showcase, we have the Mary Poppins addition to the Great Britain Pavilion. They brought the legend Dick Van Dyke on stage just to announce an indoor Mary Poppins teacups attraction that would ultimately never happen. Rumours were circulating that the original iteration of this ride was to be based on the Mary Poppins Returns film featuring Lin-Manuel Miranda and Emily Blunt, specifically the Royal Dalton Music Bowl scene. But after that film's relatively lukewarm reception, it was quickly reworked to be themed to the original movie before being officially announced at the 2019 D23 Expo. Now eventually, the project faded into obscurity before concept art leaked to the public, sparking interest in the attraction once again. Despite this, Disney has been pretty silent on this ride ever since. Whilst a teacup ride isn't the most interesting addition to Epcot, the park desperately needs additional attractions like this. Being indoors would have also allowed for some incredible lighting and projection effects. Arguably, the largest project that was shelved at Epcot has to be the Play Pavilion, a full overhaul of the Wonders of Life Pavilion that has been closed since 2007. The high-tech plans were set to include plenty of interactive experiences that could be quickly changed out and overhauled using state-of-the-art technology. The original attractions included a new version of the Animation Academy, a water balloon throwing game with Huey, Dewey and Louie, an interactive Zootopia game called Hotel Heist, and more. Of course, this was all announced in late 2019, and 2020 had different plans for the future of high-touch experiences. While the Play Pavilion was set to be the largest project, bringing the most new experiences to Epcot, the affectionately nicknamed Barstool on Legs was set to be the biggest new build. Towering over the park would have been this massive three-story festival center designed to essentially serve as the flexible hub for Epcot's many numerous festivals. Of course, this was all announced during the Chapek era, where every new addition was legally required to feature an upcharge. The space was supposed to be rented out to businesses or wealthy patrons, or guests could have purchased tickets to exclusive dessert parties on the roof for Epcot's nighttime spectaculars. But it's okay, because we here at Review Time are not going through our Chapek era, and you can like and subscribe to us completely for free. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so please, anything you can do to help us out is greatly appreciated. Now, the fate of the bar stool on legs teetered for several years before being officially cancelled in early 2023. Along with it went Harmonious, which was specifically designed to take advantage of the vantage points provided by the rooftop terrace. Without it, it made little sense for the heavily criticised show to remain at the park. Now, other smaller projects that have been unceremoniously cancelled were a new film for the China Circle Vision Theatre in Epcot entitled Wondrous China, and the Spaceship Earth overhaul that would have been focused on the idea of storytelling throughout time. Over the other side of the swamp at the Magic Kingdom, it was announced in 2017 that the park would be getting an enclosed indoor theatre space off of Main Street USA. 
The Magic Kingdom has been longing for a dedicated show space for many years, but this was quickly cancelled just a year later in 2018 when Disney realised how expensive it would be to pay for the many more equity performers required for its daily productions. Likewise, the attraction would have overtaken the manager's parking space of the Magic Kingdom. Not saying that's why it was cancelled, but it's just an interesting tidbit. Equity performers are expensive. And we have seen Disney slowly sunset contracts across the park, such as the many puppet performers who were cut once their union contract and conditions changed, which is disappointing to see. Walt Disney Studios Park, the second park at the Disneyland Paris Resort and arguably one of the worst Disney parks in the world, has also been blessed with an overhaul of a similar magnitude to Epcot's, which is great because, by goodness, did it need it. Originally, when the plans were announced, Frozen and Star Wars were set to be the new lands coming to the park. But Disney has been oddly quiet about Star Wars of late, and it has been unceremoniously cancelled. Oddly enough, this was meant to be a toned-down version of Galaxy's Edge featuring just a single attraction. This was most likely to be Rise of the Resistance, but the reliability of this ride has been brought into question many times, and... Walt Disney Studios Park does not need any more problems than it already has, so it makes sense for Disney to shy away from this expansion. Instead, it's looking like this plot of land might be used for a future Lion King themed expansion. Over at Hong Kong Disneyland, it was announced that a huge new attraction in 2016, simply known as the Avengers E-Ticket attraction, was set to open in 2023 as the major ride in the Stark Expo re-theme of that half of the park's Tomorrowland. The park made preparations by demolishing Hong Kong's version of Autopia, which occupied the same plot of land. But since then, Disney hasn't officially spoken about the project in over five years, and the land appears to be used as a staging ground for the park's many expansions. There was even concept art released for this at D23, and it's just gone nowhere ever since. Similarly, Disney California Adventure Park was meant to also get an Avengers e-ticket ride as part of their Avengers Campus, with them going as far as building the ride's entrance facade and not much else. The original iteration of this attraction would see you traveling to Wakanda with focus on Black Panther, but after the passing of Chadwick Boseman, Disney held off on any work to wait and see how Wakanda Forever was received by audiences that that was the last we heard about this version of the e-ticket attraction. Now, eventually, Disney announced a new iteration where you would travel the multiverse and fight King Thanos. The ground hasn't broken on this, and we're already three years into Avengers Campus without this flagship attraction. Of course, none of this is exactly new. Disney has announced attractions only for them to be quietly cancelled countless times in the past. With the 90s Disney decade eventually becoming a decade of broken promises. The company quickly learnt their lesson that people aren't particularly fond of getting their hopes up for a theme park or attraction that never eventuated, things such as Disney Sea in California. But as they say, history is destined to repeat itself. In fairness, with the explosion in popularity of social media sites, the news cycle moves at breakneck speeds, and Disney, like any corporation, feels the need to constantly announce new things so they stay relevant to the masses. Just look at the recent marketing push for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, where every few days we are seeing new critters, plushies, and characters announced for the upcoming attraction. In the past, these would have all been announced at once within a larger conference, or not even announced at all and left to be merely discovered once the attraction opened. It's not necessarily a bad thing for them to be doing their announcements this way. It's marketing's job to get people excited about their products, but with them needing to stay relevant all the time, they're going to throw out some announcements that never eventuate. Now, we don't want this to be a Universal vs Disney video. But when you look at the differences in marketing for something like Tron Light Cycle Power Run and the Velocicoaster, there is a stark difference. Disney announced Tron for the Magic Kingdom six years before it would open, and a year before construction would even begin. Velocicoaster, on the other hand, was almost fully complete before they announced that it was anything other than a churro stand, and opened around six months after the ride was officially announced. While Universal probably has just as many cancelled projects as Disney, 
Holding back on their announcements until construction is in full swing means that their cancelled projects aren't as publicly visible, and therefore aren't as damaging to the company's reputation. And as if promising things that would eventually never happen wasn't quite enough for Disney, in 2022 they introduced a new way of unveiling concepts for the parks called Early Concept Explorations. At the D23 Expo in 2022, Disney had so little to announce, they couldn't fill up an entire panel for their parks, so spent 50 minutes talking about projects that they admitted would likely never come to fruition in their shown form. The first plan that they would announce with this banner of early concept explorations was one that has already been cancelled and replaced. This was the plan for a Zootopia and Moana re-theme to Dino Land at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Zootopia was set to replace Dinosaur with a brand new re-theme to that dark ride, and Moana was set to replace Dino-Rama with a family-friendly flume ride as the new land centerpiece. Now the second plan was one that hasn't officially been cancelled, but it's guaranteed to look completely different if it ever does open. That is the plans for a Magic Kingdom expansion known as Beyond Big Thunder. Originally Coco and Kanto and Villains were sent to be the featured lands in this new mega expansion, but rumours are pointing to everything but Villains already being completely changed, with Coco and Encanto instead set to come to the Animal Kingdom in the now completely different plans for Dino Land, which would see Indiana Jones replacing Dinosaur and Encanto replacing Dino Rama. Honestly, I find this all immensely confusing. <laughs> At times, it feels like Disney is using these blue sky pictures as the world's largest free marketing research, seeing how many people kick up a stink to plans that may or may not ever eventuate. Has Disney lost the trust of their Imagineering teams so much, or are the Imagineering teams trying to desperately prove that guests don't want or need intellectual properties crammed into every corner of the parks, whether they are thematically appropriate or not? Of course, change inherently isn't a bad thing. If things change to something better, like, arguably, the Zootopia and Moana Animal Kingdom plans, then that's great. The issue is that's not always what happens. Take Epcot, for example. Of all those cancelled projects, only the bar on legs is seeing something else take its place. A boxy building that looks like the definition of a budget and creative void. Today, we've barely scratched the surface of the issue. We haven't even touched on plans that were shown but not officially announced, such as the Panther Transport Attraction and the Dinner Theatre for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and a whole lot more. Disney seems to be losing touch with their audience. Recent failures of things like Harmonious, Disney Enchantment, and the Galactic Star Cruiser seemingly confirm this. We love Disney theme parks. It's pretty much why this channel exists in the first place. But it's incredibly disappointing to be promised and introduced to so many amazing ideas and projects that ultimately never happen. This year's D23 is shaping up to be huge for new theme park announcements. Let's just hope a greater percentage of them actually happen than those in the last decade. It's becoming more difficult to get behind projects that might never happen. And I know that I'm going into the event with some shared skepticism, but fingers crossed Disney has learned not to make promises that it can't keep. But over to you. What do you think is the biggest loss from Disney's broken promises? And do you think that it makes it difficult to get excited about future announcements? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to support what we do further, be sure to check out our Patreon down in the description below. For review time, I'm Dom. Thanks for watching.